beloved brethren. Thank you so much, O God, because it is our faith that the reason why we are still here is not because we are holier than others, it's not because we are perfect or clean, but because of your grace, your love, and your compassion, that despite our many shortcomings, our sins and iniquities, you have allowed us to be cleansed, to be able to be worthy before your sight so that we may be able to follow your teachings and your commandments that will lead us to the grace of salvation come judgment day. Father in heaven, we remember the time when we have been called into the fold, that you have used instruments so that we may be able to receive your pristine doctrines. And because of this, Father, you have changed our lives. We now see the light we now see the path that you have laid before us. You have given us that firm resolve. You have given us our strength in our faith so that we may be able to follow you come what may in this world. Despite the many trials, the many persecution and oppression, we continue to follow you, Father. And because of this, you have allowed us to enter into the fold, to be members of your flock, to be members of your church, so that, Father, we will be amongst those to be chosen to continue faithfully following your teachings and your commandments. Father in heaven, please continue to use instruments for your children to be called into the fold, so that, Father, they too would have a chance for the grace of salvation. We know, Father, that it is your wish that everyone will be saved. So allow them to be able to hear your words and your teachings so that this will lead each and every one of us so that we may be able to repent from our sins, to be able to receive the Holy Spirit and the grace that is coming from you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much because of you. The Father continues to listen to our prayers. Because of you, we have been given this chance to be members of your fold. Please continue to intercede all of our prayers to the Father so that He may be able to hear all of our supplications and forgive all of our sins. Father in heaven, please continue to use our brother as your instrument. Endow in him the Holy Spirit coming from you. Give him the power and clarity as he teaches your words and your teachings. And allow each and every one of us to receive them, to understand them, and to be able to follow them in our life. Continue to bless your children wherever they may be. Send for the Holy Spirit wherever we are gathered with our household, our family and friends, so that, Father, all of us may be guided accordingly and be able to receive the grace of salvation come Judgment Day. It is our fervent hope that you have received our prayers, that you have forgiven our sins, that you will be with us not throughout today, but all through our life, so that, Father, we know that every step we make, every decision we make, you are with us, and you are the one guiding us. For all of this, we humbly ask and beg, in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen.
Beloved brothers and sisters, this lesson that we are to study has something to do of baptism and renewal of one's life. We probably remember the first time we were baptized and how we received the teachings and how we were able to enter the church in the proper way and what is expected from us. At the end of this lesson, brothers and sisters, we will do a prayer, but right after the prayer, before the doxology, we'll take an oath taking. On behalf of Brother Laversia, please prepare your prayer at the end of the oath taking so that um, we will be led right after that, we will sing the doxology. But after I preach the worship service, uh, I will pray first and then take the oath taking up for all of us and then uh, Brother Laversia, you'll pray at the end before we sing the doxology. Like what you have heard, brothers and sisters, the importance of baptism and living a renewed life is the title of our lesson. This were, these verses were taken in, from the compilation of uh, the doctrinal lessons that we have received and from our worship services that we have done. Other people say you don't really need the church. All you really need is the Lord Jesus Christ. To them, the church is not important. What is important is our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let the Bible give us a clear answer to the reasonings that others might be saying. In the first century, those people who were to be saved, if the church is not important, where were those people who were called in the first century being added to? Let's start our studies in Acts 2.47. Let us read the passage. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So, if the church is not important, why is it that even in the first century, those who were to be saved, where were they being added? To the church. Whose church? If the church is not important, Christ says in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I will build my church. So to Christ, of course, it's important because that's the first thing that he has done to build his own church. And one must be added to the church in order to be saved. It is not the church that will save you, but it is the way in how you can be saved. How do we know that? For whom did Christ give his life for? And that's why we know that the church is important to Christ himself and even to God. Ephesians 5.25 Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. If the church was not important, would our Lord Jesus Christ make a great investment like giving his life for the church? So we know in Ephesians 5.23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of his body. So it is Christ's way in saving us. That's why we need to be added to the church that he established or built. If it were not important to Christ, would he make a big investment of giving his life for the church? What did he use in giving his life for the church? Acts 20, 28, Lamps of Translation. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed your visitors to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So what did our Lord Jesus Christ use? In showing that he really cared for the church. 
his own blood, not silver or gold that is corruptible, but his precious blood that was used. That's written in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. What is attached to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? That is the reason why we should be redeemed or purchased by his blood. Hebrew 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? What is attached to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ once you are a member of the church that he established? Well, you are purchased by his blood. That way you have the right to serve the living God. So don't waste the opportunity given to you or given to us as the opportunity to serve our God. Many people in this world want to serve God, but this is one thing that is so sure that we can receive the right to serve the living God if we are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What else is attached to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hebrew 9.22. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So what else is attached to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? The forgiveness of our sins. Let me ask you this question. Do we want to be forgiven for our sins? Is that not the reason why that our Lord Jesus Christ uses his own precious blood? So that you and me will be given the opportunity to be forgiven for the sins we have committed? And most of all, what else is it that is attached to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why one cannot evade to get the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ to be a part of the body or the church that he has established. Romans 5, 8, and 9. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. By his blood, we are now put right with God. How much more then will we be saved by him from God's anger? What else does the Bible teaches us in what we can be assured of if we are covered by the redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? We will be saved from God's anger, which is God's anger or wrath in Zephaniah 1, 14 and 18 and 2 Peter 3, 7 and 10. That is the day of judgment. Do we want to escape the God's judgment or the anger of of God on the day of judgment, it is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we should take good care of being a member of the body of Christ or the church of Christ. Why is it that we need salvation in the first place? Romans 5, 12, let's read the Bible. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sin. So why is it that we need salvation in the first place? Because all of us sin. Is that true that all of us sin? Who's the most innocent looking there attending right now? Any volunteers? Where well, can I see you? Go ahead and uh, look around you. Who looks the most innocent? Ask that person. Did you sin? What is the answer? All have sin do you know why it is so important to belong to the church that christ established what is the payment of sin and for those who were able to receive the enlightenment of how to escape the punishment of god brothers and sisters what is this to them romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord so which death or what is the cause of sin death but is there a way for us uh to escape death well we know the cessation of breath when man dies uh as it is appointed for a man to die once, but after this judgment, Hebrew 9.27. Maybe we cannot escape that because there are people who will be alive on the day of judgment 
will be caught up together to meet with the Lord and be with the Lord forevermore. That's written in First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. But if by chance judgment day did not yet come and you had to die, remember there's still a day of judgment. But what does the Bible make mention to those who are given this opportunity to be saved? It is a gift. You like receiving gift? What is the greatest gift here? The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember that John 10, 9 says, I am the door. Any man who enters in me will be saved. That's why in Christ Jesus, you have eternal life. In Christ Jesus, you have salvation. So the question is this. Which is the full payment of sin? And that is the reason why one must strive to receive this gift of our God for eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Revelations 2014. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Which is this that one should escape the anger of God? That is the second death. But do you know that all that can be done? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what Christ, uh, uh, what Apostle Paul makes mention about the Lord Jesus Christ in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, if you are already a part of the body of Christ, remember the gifts that were given to you in how we can escape the punishment of our God. And not only that, but also to receive forgiveness of sins. And also, brothers and sisters, to have the right privilege to worship the living God. Now, if the second death is the full payment of sin, how was it made possible that our God would be able to give us this promise of salvation? What is it that we should understand what God did so that we would be able to be put right, like what we have heard a while ago, we were put right before the sight of God. How was that made possible when we are all sinners in the first place? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Brothers and sisters, how was it made possible if we are only sinners that we were put right before the sight of God? Not through our own, but it was God who made our Lord Jesus Christ sin for us. Why? Because Christ never committed sin, as written in 1 Peter 1, 21 to 22. But God made our Lord Jesus Christ to be sin for our behalf, so that we who are sinners will be put right before the sight of God, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Why? What is the righteousness of God in the first place? Deuteronomy 24. 16, the fathers shall not be put to death for their children. Neither shall the children be put to death for, their, for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So what is the righteousness of God in the first place? Every man is to be put to death for his own sin. You're probably wondering, how would that be made possible? Our Lord Jesus Christ was the one that never committed sin, but we are those who committed sin. How would that be made possible that he is to answer for our sins when we are the sinners and Christ never committed sin? What did our Lord Jesus Christ do so that we who are sinners, will be put right before the sight of God and that we might be made the righteousness of God. Let's turn to the Bible for an explanation here, brothers and sisters. Let's read in Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one 
and has broken down the middle wall of separation, the middle wall that separates us from God so that he will not hear us is our sins or iniquities as written in Isaiah 59 too. But that was broken down through our Lord Jesus Christ. In what way? 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. There's the law and commandments contained in his ordinances. Every man is to be put to death for his own sin. But even with that, what did our Lord Jesus Christ do? So that we who are sinners will be justified to be saved. So to as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. What did our Lord Jesus Christ create? One new man. Brothers and sisters, if we have created one new man, then we understand, brothers and sisters, because of that peace was established. How do we know? And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cry, through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. So what we can he see here, what actually was done, you cannot separate the head from the body because the body, as written in Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. So one head, one body, before the sight of God, one no man. So you cannot just accept Jesus and then reject his body, the church. They are inseparable. And so once you accept Jesus, you must also accept the body or the church that Christ died for and gave his life for, shed his blood for, and so that we can be justified so that we will have that right to worship God and also to be saved on Judgment Day and to be forgiven for the sins that we have committed. So therefore, what separates us from our God will be broken down through our Lord Jesus Christ, through that one creation he has made, one new man. He's the head, the body is the church. Therefore, if you are a member of the body of Christ or the church established by the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are justified to be saved as to be a true member of the body of Christ. Why do we say true member? Because there are those who, after knowing that this is the way, they took for granted their membership. They thought that is all the reason why they are just called, and they don't need to make any kind of sacrifices. So when time comes in one's life that he is to be persecuted or to stand on the side of the truth instead of taking side with God and the Lord Jesus Christ and instead of being firm in his conviction that he will continue firmly in his faith. What is it that others have done? They turned away. They stopped following. So what is the purpose why we were called in the first place? By our God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.29, For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. So it's not true that you must only believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The very reason why you were called is not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And what should you feel when you start suffering for our Lord Jesus Christ? And how could you suffer for Christ's sake? Colossians 1, 18 and 24, let's read. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may have the preeminence. preeminence. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. How should you feel now that you were called not only to believe in him, but to suffer for Christ? You should rejoice. Why should you rejoice? Because when Christ was being nailed on the cross, when he was being put to death, on the cross. He suffered for you. He suffered for me. For those who have entered his body or his church. They have been. Amongst those. Who have gained. 
all these gifts that come from our God. And now it's your turn to be persecuted. When you are being persecuted and being oppressed for your Savior, how do you feel? Are you happy or you rejoice? Because at least through this, you are able to repay your Savior. If you may not be able to repay your Savior fully, because that is impossible, brothers and sisters, at least in this measure or this way, you are able to rejoice when you're persecuted because of your Savior. So our question is this. Those who are in Christ, they are the ones being mentioned here. The body, the church. The how is it that you are in Christ? John 10, 9, 16. I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. How is it that an individual is able to be Amongst those who will be granted all this gift for blessings that comes from our God, they are to enter in Christ. In the King James Version, I am the door. Any man who enters in by me will be saved. Where are they to enter? To the flock. Which is the flock? Acts 20, 28 of the Lambs of Translation. Let's retake heed therefore to yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed your overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. What is the name of the church? It's called the church of Christ. How does an individual become a member of the church of Christ or enter in Christ? 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 27. But... For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. How are we to enter in our Lord Jesus Christ? One enters in the body of Christ through baptism. That's why one who is to be a member of the church or the body of Christ must be baptized. But who are those that should be baptized? Mark 16, 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Who are those that are to be baptized within the body of Christ or the church of Christ? The one that believes because the one that believes and is baptized will be saved. Why is it that they will be saved? Let's read in Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they become disciples of Christ. And we know that our Lord Jesus Christ says in the book of John 10, 27, 28, and 29, My sheep follows me, and I give them eternal life. Who are these that he's mentioning? We read already in the book of John 8, 30 to 32. Those who believe in him, his disciples. So the disciples of Christ, brothers and sisters, they are baptized into the body of Christ or into the church of Christ. But they continue to follow our Lord Jesus Christ in order to receive eternal life. Because once a person stops Following our Lord Jesus Christ, he is no longer a believer. The Bible says he that believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So there's really uh, a choice for us. Believing is just not believing, but putting into practice what we hear, brothers and sisters, so that we can be sure that we have these great blessings. Don't Lose your focus while you're in this world. For those who are to be baptized or those who have been baptized, what is it that was done on our behalf? And that is what is required of us until this point of our lives. Let's read in Romans 6, 3, 5, and 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Remember, brothers and sisters, Christ died in the first century. But through baptism, you are able to be baptized into his death. Why? Five, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So even at the point 
that when we are to die as faithful members of the church, true church of Christ, then as our Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected after three days, for those who have died and have done good, they will be resurrected to life. But those who have done evil, they'll be resurrected for condemnation. John 5, 28 to 29. Let's continue to read. What is that? There therefore our obligations, now that we unite ourselves with Christ's death, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Brothers and sisters, what is it that should be done on behalf of those who unite themselves with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, when they are resurrected or when they are taken out from the water, brothers and sisters, they have to renew their ways of life. So baptism is like a burial, burial for our sins. Have you ever seen, uh, seen a person that uh, have been buried? When one is buried, he is, is he completely buried under the ground? Yes, right? Same thing. All sins that we have done should be buried where? Under the water, right? Have you seen one person after he's been baptized? He's carrying on the right hand his whiskey on the left hand, his uh, uh, other beer, Colt 45 or Coors. Is there such thing like that? No, right? There's no such thing. Like that. You have to bury everything under the water because when you come out from the water brothers and sisters we understand that we must renew our ways of life in what sense let's read galatians 3 27 for as many of you as were baptized into christ have put on christ so for all those who have received the baptism already they have put on christ do you still remember that are we still intact with our faith that we are still in this mentality of having Christ put on us? What should motivate us in putting on our Lord Jesus Christ or we remembrance or remember that we were baptized into the body of Christ? Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What should motivate each and every one of us so that we would be able to grasp on the obligations that is entrusted to all of us who have received this true baptism. Well, understand the Bible. I have been crucified with Christ. Others might be saying, how is that that I have been crucified with Christ? I'm in the 21st century and our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified in the first century. How is it made possible that I'm crucified with Christ? Others might say, well, it is through baptism you unite yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism into his body as being members of his body or the church. The church that he died for. That's why it's called after his name, the church of Christ. Now, how is this to be seen that you put on Christ? It is no longer you who live, but Christ lives. The Bible says, in the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are we amongst those who have been loved by Christ and by God? Let us be thankful. And so for those who have the faith of Christ. What is the faith of Christ? Philippians 2, 5 and 8. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. What is this mentality or faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? Christ as the head of the body or the church, he became obedient 
he humbled himself and became, became obedient until death. What does the Bible say? For those who became members of his body, let this mind be in you. Why is it only but right for us to have the mind or mentality of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he's the head and you're a member of his body. You live for Christ. You don't live for yourself anymore. You live for Christ because God loves you and sent his begotten son. He that believes in him will have eternal life. John 3, 16. And the son loved you and gave himself for you. Now you must live for Christ. And so that you would always cherish your membership. When you're sad and when everything's happening in this world, there's so many problems happening. You think of the greatest wealth you have is your relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you still a member of the Church of Christ? One might be saying, weren't you among those who were removed from the Church of Christ? How could you now say that you're still a member of the Church of Christ? Let's read here, brothers and sisters, Isaiah 1, 8 through 10. So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant. We would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. We already have proven in the past that we know that the daughter of Zion as written in Hebrew 12, 21 to 22 and 23, refers to the church of the firstborn. The church of the firstborn, we know it was mentioned, is Christ in Colossians 1, 18. And that is the church of Christ. So the daughter of Zion in this last days, this is what's going to happen to it. And that's the reason why God had to still make a calling or election to set aside from this group of people who are already members of the church of Christ. What are the criteria that God will see among those whom he will consider to be members or faithful members of the church of Christ? Because they follow the Lord Jesus Christ, even if they are persecuted and oppressed, they still stood their ground in taking side in the righteousness of God. Let's continue to read. Hear the word of the Lord. You rulers of Sodom, give ear to the law of our God. You people of Gomorrah. So God is speaking now to the leaders of the church of Christ in this last days. But what is it that God would want to see among those leaders and those followers of the so-called members of the church of Christ that is under the administration Oh, Brother Eduardo, at this very moment, wash yourselves clean. Stop all this evil that I see you doing. Yes, stop doing evil and learn to do right. See that justice is done. Is there justice for how many years already, brothers and sisters, that Brother Angel is still there with his companion in jail? Is there justice? To those who have been oppressed and persecuted and excommunicated, excommunicated from the synagogues. The Bible says, learn to do right. See that justice is done. Help those who are oppressed. Give orphans the rights and defend widows. Your leaders are rebels and friends of thieves. They are always accepting gifts and bribes. They never defend orphans in court or listen when widows present their case. Have not all this been fulfilled? Have we not witnessed this unfolding in our times? But who are those who are still considered as true members of the Church of Christ? Well, it was God himself who have set aside a very small remnant, a very small remnant. So don't think that the church of Christ is no longer existing. We are still members of the church of Christ. It was God's way in how he have seen in us that we don't partake in bribes, being friends with the thieves, accepting the gifts, not defending the orphans in court or listen when the widow widows present their case. Brothers and sisters, all this have been fulfilled to the letter in our time. So how do you think God feels for those who don't want 
to seek justice, who don't want to stop doing evil, who don't want to help the orphans, who don't want to help or listen to the plea of the widow. So now listen to what the Lord Almighty, Israel's powerful God, is saying. I will take revenge on you, my enemies, and you will cause me no more trouble. But I will crush everyone who sins and rebels against him. He will kill everyone who forsakes him. Can you imagine that? How do you think God feels towards those who don't want to follow? He, you could feel that he's very angry. But don't they belong to the church of Christ? Yes, they belong to the church of Christ. But what is the condition as to remain as members of the church of Christ? To have the mentality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does our Lord Jesus Christ, this is not his mentality when he was being nailed on the cross and people were persecuting him, whipping him, putting a crown of thorns on him. What was his reply? He said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. That's why we even forgive those who hate us. We love our enemies because we're no greater than our Lord Jesus Christ. So is there still the opportunity given to all those who may be calling themselves members of the Church of Christ, even with the present administrator, with this administration, and at this moment, what is God's call for all of them and for all of us who may have sinned in many different ways? And for those who may receive baptism, brothers and sisters, what is God's call? Let's read Isaiah 1, 18 to 21. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. How the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Why? Because when you hate your brothers and sisters, you are considered as a murderer in the Christian era. First John 3.15 And we know no eternal life abides in such people. First John 3.14 And what is the call of the Lord Almighty God? Let's reason together who is he most of all speaking to, to the leaders of the church in this last days what is it that god is saying thou your sins are scarlet they shall be as white as snow thou they are red like crimson they shall be as wool one might be saying i did not commit those kind of sin but whatever sins that we have committed before the sight of god god is giving us an invitation to come back to him if we listen you shall eat you, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the lamb. But if one refuses, he continues to rebel. He becomes an adversary of God. He becomes an enemy of God. Thou, he may say, he's a member of the church of Christ. Thou, he may say that he has served God for the longest time, but yet he does not want to change, but wants to continue to rebel against the Lord Almighty God by not following what God wants and expects from them. Brothers and sisters, sorry to say, they become God's enemy and they will be destroyed as written in the book of Hebrew 10, 27. So because of this, what is it that we should all do? Because even if we did not follow that uh, the leaders of the institution, somehow we also, also committed sin before the sight of God. What is the invitation so that we will be forgiven. Isaiah 55, 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. So God is willing to forgive us. As long as we are willing to forsake our wicked ways. How is this that we can start doing this? Psalms 32, Five, let's read. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. What is the first step that one should do so that he would be able to reform his way of life? Well, he must first acknowledge his sin. 
that is the hardest thing to do some for someone to acknowledge his or her sin. But if we humble ourselves, we are willing to go to that level and then we confess our sins to the Lord. What is it that you can receive? And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Why is it that being a true member of the Church of Christ have everything to do in caring for the orphans, in caring for the widows? James 1, 26 to 27. Do, you, do any of you think you are religious? If you do not control your tongue, your religion is worthless and you deceive yourself. What God the Father considers to be pure and genuine, genuine religion is this. To take care of orphans and widows in their sufferings and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. Brothers and sisters, why is being a member of the Church of Christ in this last days very relevant in striving to help the widows, the orphans in times of their sufferings? Brothers and sisters, because that is one mark of saying you are a true member of the church of Christ. For those who don't want to follow this way. Even if you may say. You have been a member of the church of Christ. For the longest time. But you don't want to follow. What the Bible is saying. You like to despise your neighbor. You like to talk bad and gossip. With your. To your friends. About your loved ones or members. Brothers and sisters, your religion is worthless and you only deceive yourself. How much more if you don't care for the orphans and the widows? The Bible makes mention that that is a sign of a true religion. So what should we ask our God now? If for ch by chance that those within the institution and even us who may have sinned in different ways, that we really confess our sins to God. Will God forgive us? Saying that your sins may be scarlet, they will be as white as snow, as white as wool. How did King David, a king of Israel, show that he humbled himself when he sinned against his God? Are we better than King David? Are we even better than our Lord Jesus Christ, who is also king of kings, as we know? Let's read Isaiah, I mean Psalms 51, 1 to 3, 9 through 11. I have mercy, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. A renew and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So what is this one thing that we should realize, brothers and sisters, a king of Israel like King David, when he have sinned against our God? What is it that you can see that he is really humble? So as leaders of God's people, let us be humble enough to approach our God and say that we are sorry for what we have done. We are willing to renew our ways of life and lead God's people for all them to receive salvation. And if we have made sin against our God in many different ways, let us ask our God that not to hide from us, but let us ask our God to give us a clean heart, a renewed steadfast spirit. Why is it that we need a renewed steadfast spirit? Because there are times that we are overwhelmed. There are times that we are filled with burdens. There are times that there are so many anxieties and 
troubles that surrounds us. Don't we need God? If we need God, let us approach him now. Let us ask that he allows his spirit to be within us. And so that he creates in us a clean heart. And we will always be with our God. Brothers and sisters, we hope that you realize the great blessings that we have acquired from the so many who are may, who have been called members of the Church of Christ and from whatever happened to it in this last days. Amongst those so many, we are one of the few God has chosen to fulfill what God expects from us. So if you prepare for this world, and for your future, don't let go of the greatest gift you have received. Because this is something to do with your relationship with your God, with our Lord Jesus Christ, with our salvation on the day of judgment. Please all rise and we will pray. Our Father in heaven, we approach you this very moment and thank you so very much for giving us the opportunity to realize the great importance of being baptized within the church. And for those who have received this, may they be able to cherish and live up to what you want and what our Lord Jesus Christ wants, so that we will be able to continue firmly in our calling. We thank you, O oh Father, that a um, few hours from now, there are those who, there are those who are also to be baptized. Please bless the one that is to be baptized. Help him to realize the great fortune that he will receive so that he too will have a share of the promise reward. And for those who have been baptized, help us realize what we have gone through. Yes, oh Father, there are many trials that we have to go through. And those times when we were persecuted and oppressed, we look up to our Savior. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for demonstrating to us and how you sacrificed and gave your life for us. And how we have to go through in being persecuted for your sake. We will not betray you as others may have betrayed you. We will always continue to follow you, oh, Lord, come what may. But we admit to you, O oh Lord, there are times that we become weak. There are times we lose faith, O oh Lord. Intercede on our behalf and make our prayers known to our Father. May we receive the blessings that comes from him that is to be given to all of us, especially for those who will receive the holy baptism. Father in heaven, as we return to you. We ask that you please bless all our relatives who are not yet members within the faith. Help them to also find their way to be members of the body of Christ so that they too will have a share of the promised salvation. Father in heaven, don't go away from us when we feel lonely and sad, when we have other burdens in life. That we cannot confide to anyone when we run to you in prayer. Oh, Father, listen to our call. Don't abandon us by ourselves. Don't leave us all by yourself. That there is no one listening to us when we are in despair or when we are sad. But if you are always there, you see us always striving to renew our ways of lives. And therefore, we would be able to experience your holy presence as we take oath before we may be led in another prayer. May you please help us to open up our hearts to the calling that you have given to us so that we will live up to our membership within the true church of Christ. Father, we ask everything once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain standing, uh, beloved brothers and sisters. And uh, just repeat after me, the, or you could be able to read it there. Um, uh, raise up your right hand, brothers and sisters. And right after this, oath-taking, uh, Brother Laversia, please uh, 
uh, lead the prayer. Uh, please raise up your right hand. I state your name, Randy Makaspa, a member of the true Church of Christ, which emerged in the Philippines by virtue of God's commissioning of Brother Felix Y. Manalo in this last days. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will love God above all with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I will love my neighbor as I love myself. I will wholeheartedly have faith in and uphold the commandments of our Almighty God and our Lord Jesus Christ, written in the Bible, including true teachings and doctrines of the Church of Christ. I will dedicate myself in my duty to worship and serve God and our Lord Jesus. May it mean sacrifice and endurance on my part. I will wholeheartedly fulfill the purpose of God's calling that I may be included in the very small remnant from the body of the Lord Jesus or of his church. I will commit to knowing and doing what is good to seek justice, to defend and help the oppressed and to fight for orphans and widows in their suffering. I promise with all my heart to be truthful to our almighty God, to our Lord Jesus, and to this duty entrusted upon me, knowing fully that betrayal of this trust will mean the condemnation of my soul. I will take utmost care of myself and my faith so that I may not be influenced by the evil of this world and be fully prepared to receive God's grace of salvation. So help me, God. Brother Labrosia, please lead the prayer. Our merciful and loving Father, we are so thankful, our Father, that you bless us to be a part of your Holy Church. And we ask you, Father, in our daily lives that you would always guide us so that we may be able to live a life that would be accepted of your Son. And we ask you, Father, to please help us to always have that faith that we need, that we may be able to overcome any obstacles that we encounter in this life and continue on serving and glorifying the most holy name. You know, our Father, that obedience to your holy words is what you expect from your children, and that is what we desire to fulfill. We ask your Father to help us to be able to fulfill our obligations, serving your commandments and keeping your commandments according to your will and for the glory of thy most holy name. Bless each household of your servants. Guide us all and help us to be able to continue on serving and glorifying you until the end of our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you, thanking you, Lord, for being obedient to the Father, that we might have a right to serve and to glorify you and the Father. And here we are, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, to please 
Hear the prayers of your servants. Continue to mediate to the Father for us. Asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our lives. We truly believe, Father, that you will always be with your service as we return to you, that you will guide us always and keep us close to you so that, Father, we may be able to endure all of the hardships of life and continue to serve you until the end of our lives. We do believe that you've heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forever. Amen.